Hello. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Welcome. You're safe with me. I'll be right here. Nice and close so I can speak without alerting the others. Let me tell you about Senua. Now her story has already come to an end, but now... of the others. You hear them too, right? They've been around ever since the tragedy. Well, that's not quite true. Some are old, some are new, but they've changed. I think the darkness changed them just like it changed her. thinking I can tell you she's afraid wouldn't you be you'd think she would get used to it by now after so many years but the darkness it just builds onto itself growing stronger towering over her you might try and ignore it there just out of sight where you're most vulnerable it's like it knows that just enough light is all you need to see its suffocating power You might think she's brave to go on this journey on her own. But it isn't bravery that drives her. 
Bravery only means something to those afraid of death. Said it was fear runs far, far deeper. What is she looking at? What is she leaving behind? I know what she's thinking. I hear her thoughts. It's not too late to get into the boat and go back. No one will judge her. No one will ever know. There's no going back. You can't do it. If anyone pushes away a world that conspired to cause so much suffering, there's nothing to go back to and worse to look forward to. Why don't you join us? Maybe you too have a part to play in this story. She needs Do to not focus forget now. my story, Senua. Because your darkness comes from hell, and your fate lies there. They say the burning of a corpse will take you straight to Hella's gate, but gods and the living will follow this path. You must leave the Isles of Orkney across the Eastern Sea and find a road that leads north and down through deep, dark valleys. After nine nights of riding, you will follow a great river and will find a bridge covered in gold. The path to Helheim goes from there, across the river of knives that flows from the dark world of Niflheim. Across which lies the halls of hell, the place they call Helheim. He's lost. He's lost. Where are you? in Helheim. And the goddess Hela holds his soul there. Come. Her dear beloved. Dillian. What is she doing? 
Why is she doing this? Why doesn't she turn back? She's doing this for him. She wants to rescue him. He's already dead. He's dead. But his soul is in Helheim. His soul still lives. She needs to save his soul. She wants his soul to be at peace. She needs to lay him to rest. Do you know where you are? She's the bridge to Helheim. I forget its name. She forgets too. But she does remember that only the dead may cross it. That part wasn't so easy to forget. The old fool said there was a hidden path up to it. Let's see, shall we? speak of nine worlds. The world of men they call Midgard. Sky gods dwell in Asgard. The gods of earth, harvest, wind and sea dwell in Vanaheim. The good elves dwell in Alfheim. The evil ones dwell in Svartalfheim. The mountain giants dwell in Jotunheim. The fire giants dwell in Muspelsheim. Niflheim is the world of ice and darkness. Only the dead dwell in Helheim, and that is where you must travel. Stories again, old friend. I'm listening. The runes seal the gates to hell. Focus your inner eye, and you too will see what's hidden in plain sight. I can see one. Hold it in your mind's focus. eye. Focus. Find one focus. like it to open the gate. What happens if you focus? Towards the gate, and the gate will open. The gate is open. Go through the gate. Go through it. It's dangerous. Follow it. It worked. It's I 
spent six years enslaved in hell. But I watched the Northmen. Learned their ways. I know you did. You listen? When everyone else laughed. My people pay the heavy price. Carry my stories with you. And together we will make the Northmen feel our fury. Another voice joins us. She once tried to make them go away. Pretend they weren't real. But what good is that? When we are always here. I guess it's the same with heights. You can stand on the edge. Pretend it's going to be okay. But you know that death is near. Waiting for you to make that little slip. You can't just wish things away. The world of the dead is ruled by the giantess, Hela, daughter of Loki. The gods feared her bloodline, bad on her mother's side and yet much worse on her father's. So, as a child, the Allfather cast her down into Helheim and gave her power over those who die of sickness, age, hardship, and self-slaughter. In all of the Nine Worlds, only Hela can resurrect the dead. To Hela, your Dillion was sacrificed, and with her you must bargain. of Hela herself, the half-rotten goddess that rules over Helheim. Whatever horrors lie behind that door, she must find him. Sadly. <laughs> 
spread towards her head, the seed of the soul, until there is nothing left of her. <laughs> All of her suffering will have been for nothing. battles are fought in the mind. That is what Dillian taught her. With every defeat, the dark rot will grow and soon it will take her soul. But for now, at least, she still has control of her mind. And she will fulfill her vow. Whatever the cost. He's not right. Listen to me, Senua. The goddess Hela lies behind the gate to Helheim. To open the gate, you must first face the gods that guard it. The god of fire. Surt, and the god of illusion, Valraven, spill their blood to open the gate to Helheim and enter the land of the dead. To Dillian. To his soul. It won't open. How will she get through? Why won't it open? Why can't she open? The Northmen say that in the beginning there was nothing but darkness. Bitter cold to the north, fiery hot to the south. They say the cold formed ice, which melted from the sparks from the south. The power of the darkness gave life to the dripping ice, and the first giant was born, and was named Emir. The ice continued to drip, and the power of the void gave life to it, and it became a cow whose milk fed the giant. That's right, a cow, but you weren't expecting that. Fire, 
answered. He comes from a land older than mankind. And the Northmen call upon his flaming sword to raise their enemies to the ground. Find him, Senua. And spill his blood. She found the wretched old fool on her way back from the wilds. An outcast. was badly burnt all over. She took pity on him, for he was not long for this world. Like her, who spoke of his own darkness. The Northmen. Cross it. But they say that when Ragnarok comes, not a thing in this world will be safe. The Rainbow Bridge will break under the onslaught of the fire giants riding on flaming steeds. Senua, I have seen the fire of Surt spread far and wide, and to our lands. Ragnarok is coming. Yes, I heard their scream, and I still hear them now. Helheim is sealed to the living, but you already walk amongst the dead. Look towards the gate, and you will see that it has opened. When they first came to my land, I knew enough of their tongue to beg for mercy. Took me as a slave. I wish now that they had slaughtered me like the others. I rode their storm of fire, death, slavery to many lands. This darkness you speak of? <laughs> I know it well. And I'm still here to fight it.
will stoke the fires of Muspel and let the dead walk through. Find the fire, Senua, to follow the path to Surt. Find another way. Truth and scent. Find your own path. There's always another way. There's always the Northmen tell this story. Before the Earth was created, there was a world called Muspel. Because it was in the south, it was bright and hot, flaming, burning. Sparks that flew out from Muspel became the stars. Other sparks melted ice in the frozen world of Niflheim, creating the body of the first giant, Ymir. Muspel is one of the nine worlds, and is now the land of the fire giants. And people from elsewhere cannot endure a journey there. She needs to find it. Another fire sacrifice. Another fire sacrifice. Another sacrifice. Find the fire, Senua, to follow the path to Surt. It's too far. She'll never find it. She'll never make her way back. She needs to remember the way back. What happens when she finds it? Everything will burn. Concentrate, concentrate on where you're going. She needs to remember the path. Everything will burn, then how will she find the way back? <laughs> she won't. She won't be able to tell. The Northmen say that the defender of Muspel is called Surt, the foremost of the fire giants. His name means the Black One, because he is like something burnt. The Northmen believe that he sits at the border of Muspel with his flaming sword, and at the end of the world he will leave his post. He will travel to Asgard and Midgard, waging war against all the gods. He will be victorious, and then burn the whole world with fire. The Northmen made fire sacrifices. Burning slaves like me to reveal the path to Surt. I searched for meaning in their suffering, in their eyes. But they just screamed like helpless pigs.
Do your gods answer your prayers, Senua? I asked the gods for mercy, all of them, even theirs. None answered. In the end, I set myself free. Defy the gods, Senua! Find your own path, like I find mine! My gods abandoned me! I am alone. Northmen of Hell worship the Devourers, insatiable gods of darkness. I come from Eren, Senua, where I once followed my own gods, the Tuatha de Danann. Why did you abandon your gods? Senua, I was a man of knowledge, not a warrior. To survive, I did things. Bad things. Like you, Cinema. The man I once was has died. And when that happens, even gods you worship can die with you. Northmen believe that the world will be destroyed someday. They call it Ragnarok, the destiny of the gods. Asgard will be attacked by Surt and the fire giants. A monstrous wolf will swallow the sun, and the gods will fight in vain against their enemies. There is nothing they can do to prevent it. But Odin ever seeks knowledge and magic, hoping, hoping to find a way to postpone that dark day. Oh, my God. 
the courage to shed your tears. Raise your word to the crime! My world is dead. Only then, as with a newborn, will you see the world anew. No, I see nothing now. Tell me truth. How did you escape your darkness? Senua, once I found my purpose, I was no longer enslaved to the suffering I had to endure to reach it. Unclouded by fear, I could see it clearly in others. Even my captors feared the fire of certain. And so, during one raid, I took my chance and ran, knowing that they would not follow. The fool ran into the fire. <laughs> they left me for dead. Maybe they were right to. But here I am. Free. I'm glad I found you in the wilds. I wouldn't have made it without you. The Northmen say that at Ragnarok, the sons of Muspel will travel to battle in the ship called Nagalfar, the corpse ship. And when the sons of Muspel leave the ship and ride to battle, it will be as though the sky had split open, and Surt will lead them. Wherever he goes, flame will erupt before him, and fires will burn behind him. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. The 
This darkness takes everything. Everyone. Senua. Are you sure you want to do this? We can fight this together. Side by side. We always do. This is my battle. I have to face it alone. Away from here. I don't know. For how long? I don't know. I believe in you. You know that. Just... Just promise me. That you will come back to me. I want you to say it. I want you to say it. I will come back to you. I promise. Come on. And in the end, we all fall. Even the gods have their time. Yet we still go on. Why? I made a promise. Mm. And I will go to hell to keep it. I die free. Knowing you will carry my stories with you.
in this life and the next to fulfill yours. Then I will see you in hell. Be ready to face horror in the eye as I have to find your answers. Your quest. The truth. Truth was a troubled man. A scholar turned slave. They tortured him. Took him with them on their raids. Spreading this new form of darkness to new worlds. To my world. Senua saw a deep connection form between the Northmen and the darkness. His tales of hell were true. Then that was the source of it. She learned everything she could from him. Until she too could see what he saw. Have you ever died before? It's a serious question. When the illusion of self is shattered, you simply cease to be. Though it may not seem that way to others, you know when it is true. You can feel it. A stranger in your own body. An imposter. And nothing is the same ever again. Senua has died before. She will do so again. She's only done one test. Just one She's test. only passed one test. What's, What's the other, the other test? test? What's the other Is test? there another one? There must be. The gate won't open. Druth said Val Raven. Val Raven. Val Raven, ancestor of the seers, 
and master of ravens. He hunts his prey with his powers of illusion and feasts on their remains. Follow the path to Valravan and defeat him in battle to earn his mark. The gate to Helheim cannot be opened without it. Ymir was a frost giant, a being of darkness, and all his sons and grandsons were dark after him. Of his daughters and granddaughters, some were monstrous, but others fair. But there was another who came from the ice, Buri. In shape, he was like a man, big and powerful. His son, Bor, took a fair giant to be his wife, and they had three sons. Odin was the eldest, and the Northmen hold him to be the foremost of the gods, the All Father. hides the path to Valraven. Don't trust your eyes. Find another way to see the truth. What's that? It's a door. behind the veil, don't we? But once we do, we mostly just close our eyes again and pretend what we saw was never really there. Thank you. 
The Northmen will not stop her. She will find what she's doing. Valraven's power of illusion comes from ravens. Align the ravens to break his magic seal. Show me what you have seen, Truth. Another gate. Another gate. <laughs> you know what to do. Stay back. You have to open it. It's not safe. Don't listen to them. Listen, listen. To, to break them. the seal, align the ravens with the mark of Valraven. to make it back are forever changed. Shh. 
she can get up now. She can get up now. What's happening? She can get up now. She can, she can get up. It must be magic. Dog magic. A trick. Val Raven tricking her. Val Raven. How can she get up? Bait. It's him. Dark magic draws her closer. It's not him. He's helping her. It's not him. It's a trick. She's doing it on her own. He's not tricking her. It's magic. It's an illusion. The Northmen say that Odin and his brothers killed Ymir, and that the world of men was formed from his corpse. They made his bones into stone, and his flesh into earth, and his blood into the salt sea. They set his skull to be the bowl of the sky, with his brains for clouds. Odin and his brothers caught the sparks flying from Muspel, and made them into stars. And to protect the new world from the giants, they used Ymir's great curving eyebrows as walls.
Apparently it were that simple. The worst kind comes without warning. A deep and primal signal from within. A reminder that just because you cannot see the threat, it doesn't mean that it's not already here. Route. Truth says there's always another route. Find a way somewhere. Go around somewhere. Find your own path. It's a different Northmen say you must sacrifice in order to receive. They tell how the runes were revealed to Odin only in sacrifice. He hung himself from the world tree, and he stabbed himself with a spear, and he dedicated the sacrifice to himself. For nine nights he hung on the tree without food or drink, and at last he saw the runes below him. He gave a cry and gathered them in his mind and learnt them. Then he fell from the tree. Do you know what it's like to leave everything behind? Your home? Loved ones? To head deep into the wilds? Perhaps never to return? Senua does. Because when darkness speaks, it changes everything. Turning home into a foreign land and loved ones into strangers. Exile makes sense when you realize that you were never really home in the first place.
Bell Raven. Bell Raven soul. It's over here. It's over here. Is that? It's over there. No, it's here. There's two. Listen, focus. It's a magic. 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 She's been so pissed off. This reminds her of somewhere. The forest. Where? Which forest? The forest in the wilds. The wilds. She left the wilds. She went to the wilds a long time ago. Why did she go to the wilds? She wanted to fight her own darkness. <laughs> she thought she could beat her own darkness. Did she beat her darkness? No. <laughs> it nearly killed her, but she tried. Druth. Druth helped her. If it wasn't for Druth, she'd, she'd be, be dead. dead. She can't beat her own darkness. She wanted to marry Dillian. She came to beat her own darkness and marry Dillian. But she thought work. she thought her curse would affect him. She thought her curse would spread to him. She thought she'd bring the darkness to him too. She, she nearly died. She thought the curse made her tainted. Druth helped her. The Northmen say that Odin is always in search of knowledge and wisdom and magic. There was a very wise being named Mimir who guarded the waters of wisdom which flow from the roots of the world tree. Odin wished to drink from this spring, but he had to pay a price. So he gouged out his own eye as offering to Mimir. He drank from the well and traded one way of seeing for another.
I was so naive to think she could banish it on her own. The further she saw into the darkness, the more she struggled to see anything at all. And the glow, the smallest hints of shape, sound, or thought, grew in strength until they consumed her whole. Before she knew it, the darkness had her in its claws. There is no such thing as victory when it comes to the darkness. It's like it doesn't want to kill her. Yet, it will gnaw at her, biding its time. Only when she is at her weakest will it strike to kill. Will she find Dillian before her time comes? sister and his father sent him to pay for her release but they took his gold put him in chains and held him for a day and a night without food or water then they released him I don't know why upon his return his father's enemies in Erin set fire to his home his father burnt to death and his brother was killed but he escaped with 
his sorrow in his heart. His father's enemies offered redress for his loss and invited him to a feast. It was at a hall near the sea. But when he went there, they betrayed him to the Northmen, who enslaved him and took him to hell. Six years later, his slave masters landed on the shores of Orkney, burning all before them. And into that fire, Findon made his escape. What was Findon burnt away that day? But from the flames, a new man stepped forward, and Druth was born. Druth, the man that I am now. And though Findon never set eyes on his dear sister again, I, Druth, have found you, Senua. I wish you could have seen my home before these dark times. Well, in the wilds, it never does. You think you can overcome the darkness, make sense of it, and once relief settles in, strikes out of nowhere, throwing you helplessly back into the maelstrom, drowning the mind in fear, deeper, deeper, dragging you down so far into the void that maybe this time. There is no coming back. Help me. But there, Help. in the darkness, Senua. And she remembered what he told her. Hear me. Help. Reach out to me. Help. Senua. Take my iron mirror. Look into it. For it is a window into the underworld. Within, you will see the face of the darkness that you fear. And if you focus. Like I have taught you to, you will also see that as much as the darkness has you trapped within its veil, it too is trapped within yours. Focus! 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 I see you! I see you now! You led me to the wilds! You trapped me there!
Valraven, one of the keys to the gate to Helheim. Hold it in your mind's eye. With every battle, the darkness grows stronger. Every victory bringing her closer to defeat. Unfair, isn't it? In those dark winter nights in the wilds, there were times when she considered Letting go. If it weren't for truth, a chance encounter in the wilds, she would not have heard his stories of the Northmen. And she would not have this chance to find Dillian's soul. I'm coming.
she would lay in the grass and stare at the clouds. And there she saw them. Elusive. Shifting faces. After a while, she could see the faces everywhere. In the trees. The mountains. The caves. Just like I do. Once you can see into the underworld, the underworld and all the souls within it will see you. Don't be afraid when they speak to you. I will always be here to guide you. Did you see her? That was her mother, Galina. She was a priestess, a healer. She taught Senua to see the weave that binds the world together. And it was beautiful. It was a time before the darkness. But when it did come, it first came for her mother. Senua still sees her face from time to time, hidden in the world. Like she's still watching over. She misses her so much. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Don't open the gate. Don't. She's done it. It's so dark. It's so dark. It's dark. It's the dark. darkness. Only the dead may cross. Only the dead may cross into hell. I'm not ready to die. 
will be when you see what they did to your dear beloved.
will turn into darkness. Brings out another chair. journey to Helheim is However you come to the gold-covered bridge that leads to Hell, you may find it guarded by a giantess. She will ask your name. She will ask your lineage. She will ask your business. The Northmen tell of the warrior woman Brynhild, who leapt into fire and rode to Hell to join her slain love Sigurd, and is challenged by the giantess.
Hela possesses large dwelling places in Helheim. Tall are her walls, high are her gates. The name of her dish is hunger. Her knife is famine. On her threshold all will stumble. Her bed is called sick bed, and her bed hangings are called flames of a funeral pyre. They say she is easy to recognize, half black and half the color of flesh, and her face menacing and grim. You're not a warrior. You're a disgrace. The gods will punish you for this. Pick up the sword. Pick it up. Fight the darkness. Fight it. Get up. Get up. Get up and fight. Stormy seas and lost souls. She's dreamt of this before. They say dreams are visions of our memories, thoughts and fears, as seen by our inner eye. But what if each one of us is always dreaming, even when awake, and we only see what our inner eye creates for us? Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares. Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through her eyes. Because
because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. You fail the gods. You're pathetic. Rotten. Cursed. What were you thinking? Did you really think you could win? How stupid can you be? Everyone hates her. She's cursed. The shadow Look at you. A warrior. Worthless. Weak. Pathetic. Go on. Feel sorry for yourself, because there is no one left to do that for you. Everywhere. You What's that? Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Broken and lost. Just do like it. your soul. Do it. Come on. Dare. Why go on when you give everything and face that which torments you, only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined? Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? Sometimes the answer lies in a memory, a feeling, song. Before she first met him, she was not in a good place. Just a teenager, but not like the others. Barely functioning, she rarely left the house. Her father, Zinbel, made sure of that. Only occasionally did she venture out on her own, collecting firewood and herbs, errands out in the Orkney Plains. Was her world like this one, barren and lonely?
Senua, there will be times that you will feel alone and exhausted, like a strange little fish swimming against the tides of the big ocean. But have the faith to let go and let the tide carry you away. Because the whole ocean is your home, and it does not ask you to swim against it. of a great hero. His name is Sigurd. His father's hall was built around a great tree, and one day Odin comes and thrusts a sword into the tree, a gift to whomever can release it. Many try, but the sword only comes out at Sigmund's touch. His brother-in-law, King Sigir, wants it, but Sigmund refuses him, so King Sigir plots revenge. He invites Sigmund and his brothers to a feast, but when they arrive, they are met with an army, not a warm welcome. King Sigir captures Sigmund and his brothers, steals his coveted sword, and readies them for execution. Sigmund and his brothers seem certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister, and she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel and lingering death. Chained to a tree in the forest that night, a she-wolf comes and devours one of Sigmund's brothers. She returns, ravenous, night after night, until only Sigmund is left. The next day, Sigmund's sister sends a servant with honey to smear on Sigmund's face. But to what end? Well, that night, when the she-wolf appears again, you'll never guess what happens.
the she-wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face. He bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he is free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy, King Sigir, believing him dead, as his sister plots revenge. And for vengeance to succeed, even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to him. But their blood is weak and corrupted, and they're put to death by Sigmund. So his sister hatches a new plan, one that is cold of heart and pure of blood. sister trades shapes with a sorceress, and in disguise, she lies with her own brother. She gives birth to a son named Sinfjotli. After a time, she sends him to the forest to Sigmund. He tests the boy, and finds him strong and fearless, and so they go to take their vengeance on King Sigir. Luck is not on their side. They're captured, and Sigir has them buried alive. What's your name? Senwa. I haven't seen you before. I'm not... I don't leave home much. Oh. Zeno's daughter. I have to go. Wait! Who taught you to fight like that? No one. <laughs> no one? Well... I... I watched you. And... You... Learned all of that from watching me? <laughs> you should become a warrior, you know. 
Me? I'm Dilly. I'm here for the warrior trials. Would you come and watch? And bring your sword. You can't put it into words. That moment when you look into the eyes of the one who is supposed to reassure you. Make you feel safe. It only takes an instant. Fear swallows you before you have a chance to make sense of it. And darkness becomes a part of who you are. But her will changed the day the Northmen took him from her. So no one knows that there's no going back to how things were. That there's nothing to go back to at all. Stay still, stay quiet, hide and don't tell them. Their gods can see into your mind. They will use this power to destroy you. They won't stop me. I can still feel him. Whatever's left of him, they will never let him go. I'm not gonna let him rot here! You're the one rotting here. Leave me alone. You will die here. No! And all your suffering will have been for nothing! Shut up! As Sigmund and Sinfjotli are being buried alive, Sigmund's sister throws an armful of straw into the grave mound. Hidden in the straw is Sigmund's sword, the gift of Odin. They cut their way out of the grave mound and set fire to Sigir's hall. The king burns to death. Sigmund calls to his sister to come out so that she may live and be honored. She does come out but only to tell him the truth. That she had slept with him, her brother, to beget a strong avenger. I am not fit to live, she says, and walks back into the fire. Strike vengeance from your heart, Senua, as there is always a heavy price to pay. Here is the end of Sigmund's story. He was a fierce and great warrior who fought many battles. But one day, an old man came onto the battlefield. Although shadowed by a hood, Sigmund saw that he only had one eye. The man raised his spear, and Sigmund struck at it with his sword, but the sword shattered into pieces. Sigmund then knew that this was Odin, and thus that victory could not be his. He bowed his head and accepted his end. Dying, he tells his wife that she is with child and that her son will one day make a great weapon out of the fragments of his sword. The sword named Gram.
forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust, and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn, and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial Mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning. I can feel the dead in the air. You can feel the dead. I didn't do this. Turn back. Senua, you remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver the daughter of a berserker, born after he was killed. She is a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrvin. Dillian, there he 
Yes, finally. You found him. What's wrong? What happened? Can you hear me? How did you let him go? Let him Just wait go. there. I'll find you. I'll get you. You have to find him. This is your mission. Find him. You have to use everything you have and find him. Get him back. He was just there. How could you lose him? How could she lose How him? How could she find him? I'll find him. Hera disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Damn the Northmen to hell. Within the burial mound, Herver calls on her father to wake from death and bring her his sword. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave mounds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. Like I said, she reminds me of you. <laughs> the voice is getting louder. Listen, Dillian. <gasps> listen, listen, listen. It's him. Listen. It's getting louder. There he is. You're getting closer. Keep going. Send will follow the voice. We're <gasps> nearly there. Dillian's voice. It's him. He's going to save you. Find the voice. Find him. Find another way. It's not working. You have to use your mind. Where can you go? You're failing. Find another think. way. Think. 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 Focus. Think. Use your mind. Where's he gone? He's disappeared. You Look, you don't recognize him. Don't doubt yourself. You'll never find it. She doesn't recognize it. Yes, you do. You know where you are. She doesn't. Listen for his voice. Listen. Dillian. Where Listen are you? Listen for his voice. Dillian. She can't. Does everything look the same? It all looks the same. Something's different. Look for clues. What is it? What's different? There's a clue. Space, she just 
no, no, no. She doesn't think to she listen to them. She needs us. Think. She needs us to help her. Think clearly. No, what do you need to do? She needs us. What do you do? We now? need to tell her what to do. Another strategy. What do you do? She needs her voice oh. doesn't sound like Dillian. Anymore. What's happening? It's not him, it can't be. What's that sound? The voice is changing. What? Perver ignores her father's warnings. The grave mound opens, and it seems to be full of fire. Again, Herver demands her inheritance, but her father warns her that the sword is cursed and would be the bane of her family. But he relents and brings her the sword. She leaves the island with it, but the curse holds true, and death would follow in the years to come. And so, Senua, the misdeeds of a father have cursed his daughter. See the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? The chief and son. No. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come, send one. No. I am leaving! You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! It's done. You did it, but there's more. 
There's more. You're tired, but you have to keep going. There's still more. There's always more to do. It's not going to be easy. I saw once a plague strike northern lands of ice. It was so terrible that not the oldest man among us could remember the like. Hundreds died. The sickness took nearly every person younger than forty and many older. And where dying mothers gave birth, the marks of the plague were on the babes as they came out of the womb. Where are we? I don't like it. This place feels... What is this place? This place feels... It's... Creepy. Creepy. It feels wrong. It feels strange. Where is it? Where are we? There he is. There Did he is. It? The light. Go towards it. He's in the house. He's Find going him. in. He's disappearing. Follow him. <laughs> Like the old warrior trials. Dillian will help me stand to rot. She can almost taste it. Do you smell it? No. Don't worry. Not everyone can. It was a warm spring day when she went to the river with Dillian and the others. But the water. She could taste the rot. No one else could. She knew something was wrong, something sinister. She begged them to leave, but they just laughed at her. But soon enough, as the bodies piled up, no one was laughing. And they knew that she was not like that. The Northmen speak of a death moon, a light shaped like a half moon that appears inside a house and goes around the walls. I once saw the death moon appear at a farm, and first the shepherd died, then a guest died, and then the farmhands, and then the farmer and six of his men drowned at sea. But that is not the end of it, because the dead return to haunt the living. If you see the death moon, then beware, because there will be death in that house. That's it. You did it. She did it. It's not done yet. <laughs> Just a small piece of the puzzle. You found a way to climb the tower. The ladder. Quick. What now? You can see it. A line to the tree. Come to me. 
Where are you? I'm here. I'm right here. Are you in there? Where is he? Come out if find you want. Him. You have to find him. The runes. Focus. Focus on the runes. Focus, Focus the runes. There was a Northman called Grettir. Big, red-haired, immensely strong. But he was afraid of the dark. It happened one night that an undead creature came to his house to drag him outside into darkness and kill him. He resisted with every ounce of his strength. He clung to the door frame, but it gave way, and they spilled out of the house, and the monster fell back, and the moon shone down on its ghastly face. Grettir, terrified, cuts off its head, but is cursed forever. From that moment on, wherever he was, he would see those hideous eyes staring back at him. Sometimes we allow our own fear to haunt us to our grave. What's that sound? <laughs> Delius! Shano! What happened? They're blaming me for the plague. They say that I'm cursed. What if they're right? How would they know such a thing? Are they gods? None of us are. They're just... people. Good people, but they're scared. They're afraid of what they can't see. Like children scared of the dark. They make up stories to fill the void. It doesn't make them true. What if my father was right? You have to step out of this darkness. Let them see who you really are like I am. You're not a monster. Without you, this darkness has made me a monster. What if this is pointless? What if you're wrong? This has nothing to do with the sword. What if we're wrong? The sword will never be wrong. It's just a trick. It's just a pointless test. 
You've been fooled before, you could be fooled again. You don't know. It's just their game for you. You never know which way it's going to go. <laughs> to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur, the second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature, he spoke fair words, he gave fair judgments. Light shone from him, only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. The Northmen tell this story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world, fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness, swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him, Baldur's mother boasts. Only Loki, father of Hela, the mistress of death, is not amused. You need the runes to fight. Dillian. You need Dillian. He's waiting for you. Always said he He's close. He loves you. Love calling you. Dillian. Dillian, we're here. Dillian. We're nearly here. We're kind of seems so simple. Black and white. 
darkness and light. Narrow dividing lines of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further. To peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senna explored new paths into the unknown. The gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. Oh dear. Loki makes a dart out of mistletoe and goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, I cannot see where Baldur stands, and even if I could see him, I have no weapon. Loki replies, Here is a wand. I will tell you where he stands. And Huth throws the mistletoe at Baldur. It pierces through him, and to everyone's horror, Baldur is killed. And for this, Huth is slain. Was it worth having?
The Northmen tell how the gods mourned Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness entered her and she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. This love has tortured you. And Dillian. Your future. Two realities tearing at her soul. You have no time for this. Speed up. Because the secret darkness within you is all part of their game. They've set you trials to distract you. They've set you up and now they're going to watch you. What if these trials mean nothing? It's laughing at you. What if they take you no closer to do you? Overcome with grief, the gods send Hermod to ride to Hell and ask Hela to let Baldur return home. All the gods are weeping, he says. Are they? asks Hela. We shall see if he is truly missed. If everything in the world will weep for him, he shall go back to the gods. But if even one thing refuses, Baldur stays with me. The gods send messengers everywhere. Weep for Baldur, weep him out of hell. And everything wept. Men, beasts, earth, stone, trees, metal, everything. Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Baldur was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. The Northmen say that the giantess must have been Loki in disguise. The Northmen tell how the gods punished Loki for Baldur's death. They captured him and took him to a cave. They fetched his two sons and turned one into a wolf, and he ripped his brother apart. The gods used Loki's own son's entrails to tie him down and turned these bonds to iron and dangled a poisonous serpent over his face so that its venom would drip onto him. Each time the venom drips onto Loki's face, he writhes in agony. The Northmen say that is the cause of earthquakes. A reminder, perhaps, that if even gods must accept death, then so must we. It makes sense in your mind, but it doesn't make sense in the world. 
gods. The gods are but it doesn't mean anything. You can't read this language. You don't understand. Zinbel was right. You're wasting time. You're cursed. You never succeed. Slow, oh, slow, quicker. Zinbel. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see, and he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, and to see the world through his eyes. And slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. Father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. So we fix them by taking away their sight. You give up the beautiful world. You, and only you, can see just to be rid of your nightmares. Or is this the price you pay for the gift you have? The gift that makes you so special in my eyes. Just another part of the person I know. I left for the wilds to protect you from my darkness. Because I love you. But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. Killing you would be too easy. They're taking your memories to torture you. They're taking you from the inside. You're and disappearing push. one memory. Everything you have. The memories of ghosts. They belong to the gods, not to you. They're eating you from the inside. They want to kill your soul. They want to crush it. They think they want your body. They want your soul. They want your mind, and they're going to take it. The memories were yours, but they're the gods now. Nothing is yours anymore. say that their all-father, Odin, gave his eye in exchange for a drink from Mimir's well, the well of wisdom. In blindness there can be wisdom. Only by giving can you receive in return. For this reason, I give my life and pass on my stories of the Northmen to you, Senua. Where am I? I can't see. Who's there? 
Can you hear me? I'm right here. Can't you see me? No. Help me. Breathe slow. It's the darkness. Stay still. Empty your thoughts. Tell me what you feel. A breeze. Good. Then there is a way out. I can't tell where it comes from. Yes, you can. The others, the voices, they've gone. I'm still here. It's so quiet, so dark. It's okay. Listen to your own breath. Feel it rise. And fall. Good. Be aware of everything you hear and feel. Let your senses guide you. I can't go on. William? Find a way. I'm not leaving you here. I think I'm somewhere else now. The breeze has gone. Use all of your senses. Let the world speak to you. What do you hear? I hear water. Go to it. I've reached the water. Good. That's your way up. Follow it upstream. I'm so sorry. I thought I left this all behind. Don't be sorry. It's not your fault. He was right. It's inside of me. It won't let me go. Shenawat. My father. He taught me that the hardest battles are fought in the mind. Not the soul. You're no coward. You proved that to me in the warrior trials. This is just another battle. You can beat it. This isn't your battle. You don't have to help them. I want to. Besides, you are going to be a great warrior one day. You need people like you. I'll do my best. I know what you're thinking. He's not really here. It's 
seems there's no escaping the past in this place. And so she's forced to relive it. There's more of them. I think they're moving. You're breathing too fast. I'm scared. Listen to the sound of your breath. In and out. In and out. Darkness is testing you. You are in control. Oh well, 
There's a well. Don't turn back. You're getting close. even trapped within herself in the dark. You see me? Yes. Your eyes were open, but you were gone. And when it finally let her go, she could be anywhere with no memory of how she got there. comes for me. I have no power over it. But here, for the first time, someone was there to help. But I heard your voice. You brought me back. You found your own way back. All you needed was a little help. A little hope. Odin's blessing to walk a goddess into the halls of Helheim and challenge Hela as an equal. So Dillian was helping me. And a sword will lead me to him. Like when we first met. You won't survive. You met him by the tree. She met him by the tree. Maybe it's a sign, the tree. What's he trying to tell you? He's waiting for you by the tree. the strength to pass the warrior trials and she saw a way out to leave her past behind and become a warrior in Dillian's clan. Go back, go back, go back, go back. The sword is tainted by the gods of darkness. Leave it. No. He left it here. He wants me to take it. You will pay a price for this. Years later, with Zinbel's parting words still haunting her, the darkness came back with a vengeance. A plague. Tell you? Everyone suffered. My father was not supposed to die like this. Senua. 
the suffering you've caused. This is your fault. <laughs> you brought this plague to us. <laughs> you have blood on your hands. They're coming for you now. They're coming. They're coming to get you. Hold your heavy strike. Hold it. Hold the heavy strike. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold your heavy strike. Unleash the sword. She can't remember. She can't focus. focus. The mirror. The mirror focus is building. It's building. To run to in the sea of corpses, the corpse waved through itself over the ones I loved. The ship broke up under them, the ship that had sailed from the land of shining fields. Their memorial stone is sacred. Come not here in the sun, come not with a sword, come not crying over a naked corpse, come not with disturbed minds. the suffering, Senua. Does your precious gift of sight let you see the souls that rot here in this sea of corpses? Do you feel the blood running cold on your skin? Do you hear their endless cries? Do you smell their putrid wounds? They were once brothers, sisters, and loved ones. And look at what you have done to them. All because you were a coward, because you banned from your curse instead of facing it. When you turned your back on your father, Zimbo, you turned your back on the gods and let the darkness wreak havoc on your people. Why must they pay for your heresy? Her. But she didn't run. 
she escaped the only way she knew how. She gave her life to the gods. If only you had done the same, the world would have been spared this horror. It's not too late. She's calling for you. Why don't you join her? Yes. 
Rosa. The voices took her and they'll take you too. The voices have taken her. The voices. It's the end. The up on her world to follow in the footsteps of her mother to go to a place where the darkness couldn't reach her Senua look at me do you hear that Calling for me. We've lost so many. And I've lost my father. I can't lose you. You said it. I have blood on my hands. I didn't say that. You've done nothing wrong. Simba was right. Everyone will suffer. Zimbal is a fake. He is a hateful, bitter liar. He's poison. And his words still haunt you. Who do you trust? Him? Or me? Do you still believe in me, Senor? In us? Just up there. 
Listen to us. That's it. Shall we tell her where to go? Hmm. Shall we? Does she know which way to look? Does she know her way into the mountain? She's a good girl, isn't she? Look up. So clever. Did you miss us? Oh, she There's a door. You can do it. You can see it. Come on, Senua. Go away. I'm not listening. I will tell you of a great hero named Sigurd, son of Sigmund, no less. Born after his father's death, Sigurd is cared for by the dwarf, Rain. But Rain does not love the boy. Instead, he plans to use him for his own ends. You see, Rain's father possessed a great treasure given to him by the gods. But Rain's brother, Fafnir, killed his father and took the gold all for himself. Fafner hid the treasure out on a heath and could not leave it. And from the evil in his heart, he turned into a dark creature. A dragon. She can feel it. No. Don't open the door. Don't go in. Don't open the door. What's it like? A great beast guards Helheim. Garm is its name. And it knows you are here, Senua. It can smell your stink. What are you afraid of, Senua? How would you say Dillion if you are too much of a coward to step into the shadow? They can't stop me! Then do it! Run! The beast is stalking you from the shadows. Your sword is useless here. to do. Your father wants them to go away. And he only hurts me to silence them. But he's gone now. But they always come back. He says I will die if I go with them. They say I'm already dead. No, no they won't be with them. Stop! That's why they crawl through the walls. Don't listen Do you to them. see them? Do you see their faces? Help me! Help! Get me out of here! Don't go! Where has she gone? She's disappeared again. She shouldn't be here. She escaped the darkness. She, she took her own life to escape it. She can't remember when it started. When her mother lost her smile. Her eyes gazing past her towards a world she could not see. This is what happens if you reach for the underworld, he said. It was a lot to take in for a child. And the first time she felt the cold chill of fear. I don't talk much about her father. 
thoughts in Bell. I suppose I just didn't want to risk upsetting her. But it doesn't matter now, does it? and move. She realized that only she could see them. Her father, Zinbel, could see the monster in her. Get 
through it as quick as you can. <laughs> the panic is here. What's that? sole desire is to possess this dragon's accursed treasure, and he uses Sigurd to reclaim it. He tells Sigurd the story of Fafnir's gold, and the good-hearted hero promises to slay the dragon if Rain would forge a strong sword for him. Sigurd remembers that his father once possessed a sword given to him by Odin. Odin broke the sword to bring about Sigmund's death, but Sigurd's mother still has the pieces. And so Rayan reforges the famous sword. Sigurd uses the sword first to avenge his father, and then he and Rayan go in search of Fafnir. She escaped the darkness, and she's with the gods. But what if they lied? What if the darkness took her and trapped her here? The dragon Fafnir is so large and deadly that it would be impossible to kill him face to face. But each day, Fafnir crawls across the heath to find water. So Sigurd digs a pit in the dragon's path and lies in wait in it. When Fafnir slithers overhead, Sigurd sinks his sword into the dragon up to the hilt. Sigurd leaps from the pit, and Fafnir sees his killer. He warns Sigurd that the treasure will lead to his death, as it led to the death of all who owned it. Sigurd replies that death comes to all men, and every man would want to be wealthy until that day. And he takes the treasure. Why did 
you leave me? This darkness, it's spreading. Father's keeping me away from the others. Away from Tilly. I won't give up. I'm not going to rot in here. I'm going to find Dewey. Down there. No, no. She knows the beast is down there. She keeps going towards He's me. always Where are you watching you. You're never safe from him. You can feel She needs to find it. Where is he? She needs to find it. She lost it and she has to find it. He's gone! 
wanted to help her. But she wouldn't listen. She has to. He's doing his best. She never. She can't. She's going to go through anyone. He was trying to save her from the dark. The darkness. And she was trying to save her from the darkness. But she wouldn't listen. And now everyone is afraid of her. All her fault. All her fault. Weak. She should have known. She should have. Why doesn't she learn? Although Sigurd kills the dragon, Rian wants to keep Fafnir's gold all for himself. Rian also wants the strength and wisdom of the dragon, so he drinks its blood and asks Sigurd to roast Fafnir's heart for him. Sigurd does so. But when he touches the roasted heart to see if it is done, he burns his finger. Without thinking, he licks his finger and tastes the dragon's blood. In that moment, he understands the language of birds and hears them talk nearby. Beast is deeper, deeper into the darkness. Deep down. The beast has the head. She's got the head. She will be trapped. The beast has the head and he's losing it. Once she gets down there, she'll never come out. It's luring her down. The darkness will take her like it took her mother. Deeper and deeper. The beast knows. The beast knows exactly where she is. She's calling for it. She turns for their tricks every time. Please. Sigurd's new found power lets him hear the birds speak. And they say, To ride to Hinderfell and find Brynhild, the Valkyrie. She's got light on the other side. She'll be safe. Faster, faster, keep going, faster. keep going. What Stop. is she doing? Stop! Stop letting me go. Don't be letting me go. Now she can go. Stop! Stop letting me go. Help but think of him. The 
tender guiding flame in a world so black. The longer it burned, the more she convinced herself that there was nothing beyond its reach. How little separates us from what we fear. Keep the torch alight. What is she doing? Pick up the torch. Sigurd learns that Brynhild had once disobeyed Odin, and so he had her punished, stuck her with a sleep thorn, and put her body within a rampart of burning shields. Only a man who knew no fear would ever reach her. But like me, Sigurd is fearless and passes through the flames just as I did and wakes the sleeping warrior girl. She teaches him the secret wisdom of runes, namely victory runes, ship runes, runes for persuasion, runes for truth, runes for healing and help, runes for perception and power. Like Sigurd, the greatest young warrior of the north, you must learn the secrets of the runes to fight amongst the gods in hell.
people think of evil as an unnatural, invisible force, and so invoke the gods for protection. But evil can come from the hand behind the gods. A familiar hand, cold and cruel. He tried to fix her with his rituals, kept her trapped in that hole. She couldn't say which was worse, the darkness, or the monster that her father had become. She couldn't fight them both. And so she left, headed for the one ray of light that shone down on her. If she had stayed, she wouldn't have survived. But maybe Delian would still be alive. I'm so sorry, my love. She will save his soul, even if this time she can't save her own. Forgive me, Senua. I know you have no reason to trust me anymore. But believe this. It was my mission to make you hate. To hate the darkness with a passion so great it would focus your mind on this quest. For without it, I fear you would let those slack. All this time, I've wanted to protect you from the truth that would have destroyed you a long time ago. But you have conquered your darkness at every turn. You deserve to see behind the veil of darkness. And take me to the master to trust you, as deep as we can go. No. I won't stand in your way. She has to trust him. You will not survive what is in there. Searching for secrets inside of me. Secrets that even I can't see. I'm not here to fight my past. I'm here for Dillian. I will fulfill my vow, whatever the cost. No, no she can't. It's too dangerous. It's too trick me again. I know you're safe with the gods. I can feel Hela's gaze searching for secrets inside of me. Secrets that even I can't see. I'm not here to fight my past. I'm here for Dillian. I will fulfill my vow, 
whatever the cost. Say the world will come to an end. They call this Ragnarok, the destiny of the gods. First, there will be a terrible winter, three years long. Then, mankind will turn on itself. Brothers will fight each other to the death, and people will forget what they owe their kindred. Times will be hard. Crimes will be great. It will be an age of axes and swords. The wind will blow through abandoned halls. Wolves will walk where children played. The world will fall into ruin. is it? Mother, you showed me how to see further, to see the hidden wonders in our world and explore new paths into the unknown, to lead so that others may follow or to warn so that they may avoid. 
That is our gift and our duty. I'm not going to look away in fear anymore. The Northmen say the gods will fight their last battle at Ragnarok. Their watchmen will blow the horn that can be heard through the whole world. And Odin will speak with the severed head of Mimir, which gives him good counsel. The land of the giants will thunder with the sound of their army on the move. The gods will assemble. The dwarves will leave their stones. The frost giants will come from the east. The Midgard serpent will turn up the waves. Eagles will scream and tear at the corpses with their yellow beaks. The ship of the dead will set sail. say that at Ragnarok the gods will face a ship full of their foes which Loki has steered to Asgard. It carries the fire giants, the wolf that will eat the sun, and all kinds of dark creatures. Surt will join them with his sword of fire. The cliffs will crash, trolls will walk the land, men will tread the road to hell, and the heavens will split open. against the flames. Thor will smite the Midgard serpent to no avail. The sun will grow black. The earth will sink into the sea. The stars will disappear. Fire and water will meet. Steam will shoot up. Flames will play against the sky. The heavens and earth and all the world will be burned. All the gods will be dead and the warriors of Valhalla and the people everywhere. Senua, 
prepare yourself for Ragnarok. For it is nigh.
We die too. Do we die too? We I don't want to die. I don't want to die. We'll all die someday. I don't, I don't want, want to die. die. And when everyone's gone, even the gods will die. We don't want to die. I don't want to die. Stop. Senua. Stop. Senua. Turn back. Stop. Stop her. Why is she going? Stop. Senua. Stop. 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 Why won't she stop? To die, she won't stop. 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 I didn't ask you to be a part of me. If you don't want to die with me, then leave me alone. Stop. Stop. I don't want to die. Please stop. 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 You'll never come back if you go there. There is nothing to go back to. We only have each other now. Don't abandon me. Everyone suffers. They were right about me. Listen to me. Not them. They were afraid. Like children scared of the dark. So was I. They made up monsters to fill the void. That doesn't make them real.
Memories you cannot defeat. Cannot escape. This is her hell. of the underworld. They crawl into your soul and rot you from the inside. Defy the gods like your mother and the darkness will come for you too. You understand, son? Only 
only suffering brings salvation. It is the way of the gods. It was all a lie. You are a lie! She didn't defy the gods. She defied you. And so you killed her. You didn't pray to the gods. You prayed to your mother. Your mother, who was too weak to fight the darkness and abandon you. You tortured her! You killed her! You are the darkness! <coughs> Those rituals, the years of isolation, the pain that still haunts you. It was the only way to fight the curse within you. You're a liar. The darkness is inside you that will destroy you. You're a liar! No, sir. The darkness is here. You can't wish it away. And it will watch as you draw the last dying guts. I won't let you kill me! Through your darkness. You're a liar and a murderer. And if you really are Hela, then I have a sword here that can kill a god. Look at you. Running forward but moving backwards to wallow in your miserable past. You're making a mistake searching for Dillion. The same mistake that killed him in the first place. to save you from yourself. You saw them that is a lie. The plague of darkness, the butchering of the year by the Norsemen. You saw it yourself. You told everyone I was cursed. They believed you. I believed you. Tell me, Senua. Where is Dillion's soul if the darkness is alive? How you save him? He's here. I know he's here! Dillion! I know you're here! Hold on! I'll find you! Okay. 
trying to trick me again with your lies? I know he's here. You took him from me. You have him! Dillian is gone. Dillian is dead. Let him go now. I'm warning you. Or what? What can he do to me that you haven't already? Fight me! Come on! You betrayed your own father. You betrayed the gods in search of Dillian, in search of love. Look where that's got you. Let go of your battle. Let go of redemption. Let go of Dillian. Don't let your darkness hurt anyone else.
to not be afraid of death, so no. Because a life without loss 
is one without love. You turn your back on death, and all you can see is the shadow that it casts. The longer you hide from it, the longer... This is where my story once began. And so it has to end here. Because I cannot see further than this. Follow us. We have another story to tell. <laughs> 